Hi, this is Mark Cook with Kid Plains Magazine and another video brief. Today we're going to look at a comparison of horsepower in one given airframe type. The airframe of choice is a Glass Star Sportsman, near and dear to my heart, of course I have one of these things, but I recently had an opportunity to go to the factory and fly two airplanes that were essentially identical except for what's under the cowling. Big difference is one airplane, the yellow airplane you're going to see, has an IO390 Lycoming, coming, similar to mine. That's a 210 horsepower engine. It's become a very popular engine for the sportsman because it gives it a little bit of extra performance and it's really desirable for people who want to put it on floats. The other airplane, the red airplane, has a 180 horsepower parallel valve superior engine, Lycoming clone engine. Uh, so we have about a 30 horsepower difference there between the two airplanes and, and our goal really was to see what does horsepower buy you in this particular airplane. It's very interesting. I flew with Ted Setzer. We, uh, we did a number of flights in uh, nearly identical conditions and what we found was to no one's surprise the IO390 has slightly better climb performance. It's six knots faster and cruise at the expense of a little bit of fuel flow. One of the things I really wanted to look at was handling qualities between the two airplanes, and I thought the extra weight and the power uh, would have a, a, a noticeable effect on the airplanes. Fact is, the Sportsman handles the bigger engine just fine. The airplanes fly almost identically. You might say the 180 horse is just a little sweeter because it's a little lighter on the nose, it's a little easier to bring up the nose in landing. But these are very minor things, and you really wouldn't notice it unless you had a lot of time in the airplane. So when you, when you roll it all together, you say, is the $8,000 you're gonna spend roughly to get this extra horsepower worth it? The answer really comes down to what are you gonna do with the airplane? I think people in flat land who do not expect to carry a big load, do not plan to put the airplane on floats, probably be very happy with the 180 horsepower engine. In the long run, it might be a little, little cheaper to maintain, uses a little less fuel, and it's cheaper to buy. If you're gonna put it on floats, if you plan to fly out of high altitude airports or if you fly out west where you routinely go to 10, 11, 12,000 feet, I think the 390 is the choice. Gives you that extra performance, extra climb performance, and the airplane's a little faster at altitude. In the end, the market is voted because almost all of the two weeks to taxi airplanes that come out of glass air aviation have had the 390. Clearly, we're suckers for horsepower, and I can't say I blame them. It's great that we finally had the opportunity to get Mark out here with Ted to fly the two airplanes back to back so that we can get accurate data, performance data, between the 180 uh, horsepower engine and the 210 horsepower engine. So I think it's going to be a real service for everyone to be able to see exactly what the differences are and the uses are of the two aircraft. Generally what we've been saying before is if, if you're going to be going on floats, you're going to be flying at high altitudes, uh, go ahead and get the extra horsepower, get the 390. Uh, if you're trying to get in and out of really, really rugged, uh, short, backfield, uh, backcountry flying, then we say go for the 390. But for the average person who even does enjoy some of those things, uh, we say the 180 is fine. Uh, in fact, uh, we've had some people tell us that they think the 180 horse performs equivalent to the 210 horsepower engine. So 360 versus 390, a little extra weight, a little less useful load, a little more power. It just really is going to boil down to what your uses are. I think for the average person, the 180 horse engine performs fine. One of the things to always consider is the cost differential. If 90% of your flying is going to be in non-amphibious float situations, you're going to be just fine with 180 horse and you're going to save several thousand dollars. This has been Mark Cook for Kid Plains Magazine and another video brief.